Yes, good morning and welcome to Council Matters. And if you are wondering why we started off with the immortal Lou Reed, it's because instead of taking a walk of the walls that wild side, myself and my guest today, John Suttle, uh, we've had a walk of the north side, John, haven't we? Yes, I walked the last two miles, abandoned my car. Well, we could have been, we could have been a couple of proclaimers and we might have had to walk 500 miles. So, uh, uh, but... Yes, there's apparently some. I I don't know if the uh, the guard they are doing a piece of uh, traffic management training or what, but it would have to be one of the most inept pieces of management that I have ever seen in all my living life. What about yourself? Well, I, I've uh, well, I never had to abandon my car. I have to say, yeah. except for perhaps for floods, I would imagine. Well, yeah, not yeah. even that. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's get down to today's business at hand because my guest today is uh, is John Sottle, and John is from the Irish National uh, Schools Trust. John, welcome to uh, Council Matters. Uh, thank you very much, Mick. Yes. John, now I've got to uh, start off with the bio piece in the sense that I know you as a um, a man who likes to cycle through the eternal city and uh, you may be, uh, as we say, a, a boycott a few Middle Eastern flora or things like that. But I'm just wondering, um, how did you come to be involved with the, uh, uh, the Educational Trust? What's the background to all of that? Well, the background is that, that, that somebody tapped me on the shoulder in 1998 at mm -hmm. a at a school meeting in Clontarf when they were looking for a representative for the board and said, why don't you go on? Okay. And I had no idea of going on, but I said, sure, why not give it a go? And uh, I went on a board of management and, and I loved it. I okay. felt I could make a contribution. And this was back, and I spent four years on boards of management, was mm -hmm. on lots of parents' associations, got very interested. And I found that I eventually uh, had to resign from the board of management of my local national school because they introduced in 2002 uh, religious discrimination in the admissions policy. Okay. Yeah. The so-called Catholics first admissions policy, which I simply couldn't agree with. And what I found was really appalling was that I was expected to say nothing. I was expected to just keep quiet and go away. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just wondering, John, now, before uh, we get the tweets or the emails or anything like that, if anybody thinks I have a conflict of interest in this, I will declare it here and now. I'm not a Catholic. Uh, so what happens in Catholic schools, per se, is not really of any concern of mine or even any interest. However, national schools are a different thing because they are apparently state. What's your uh, background to that, John? Is there any conflict of interest at all that... Uh, uh, people might say, are you a non-Catholic? I'm not going to interest. No, oh, no, but I mean, immediately, Mick, you've gone down the road of, of using the wrong terminology. OK, fine. There's Correct no, me on this, yes. There are 3,200 national schools in yeah. Ireland, and there's not one of them that is, a, is, is called a Catholic national school okay. because it is a contradiction in terms. Sure. Now, I was brought up a Catholic. Yeah. Um, in, in the 1960s, um, I could uh, yeah. I could say the mass in Irish, Latin, and English. Yeah. Um, like myself. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, and uh, I have five children. All of them were baptized. Mm -hmm. I went to the local national school in Clontarf. Okay. My children went to the same school. Mm -hmm. um, but as a Catholic, I didn't want to discriminate against non-Catholics. I wanted to mm -hmm. be involved. I was talking to my brother the other day, and he said mm -hmm. he still felt shame at not being friends with the Protestants in Clontarf where I grew up because mm -hmm. we went to different schools. Sure. And he felt that we should be ashamed of that and, and yeah. I agree completely because yeah. I, would, I would be very happy yeah. to know all my neighbours. Yeah. I, I would put it to you, uh, I didn't grow up in Clontarf even though I live there now. We also went to different scouts, we played different sports. Uh, there, we, you know, the the era that you and I grew up in, it was segregated uh, development but, to a certain degree, was it not? But, I'm not, a, but, I'm not trying to defend no, it, John. No, I'm just no, trying to do, uh, no, but the difference, the difference between the 1950s, 60s, and 70s when I grew up and went uh, to school and now is that at that time we all voluntarily yeah. went. So my parents sent me voluntarily to the local school under Catholic patronage. Mm -hmm. Your children, parents yeah. sent you wherever they wanted to send you. But it was all voluntary. All mm -hmm. of the schools at that time were open to all children of different religious beliefs. And they all had a system yeah. of having separate religious education. So yeah. that in my school, in the late 50s and early 60s, catechism, as we taught it, went on from 9 to 9.30. Mm -hmm. And then they were put away and Okay. And the rest of the school day went on after that. Yeah. 
Um, but that's all changed now. Yeah, yeah. I, I would also suggest to you, John. And again, I don't want to get sidetracked on this. But I'm just harking back to another era. We segregated people on gender. Well, uh, well, we uh, don't fight. Uh, International Schools Trust. We don't fight that okay. because, um, in fact, separate uh, boys and girls schools was extremely common in the national school system. Mm -hmm. Again, the, the, yeah. the two-room school in Clontarf yeah. originally had mm -hmm. one room was the boys' school and one room was the girls' school. And mm -hmm. even in the 1840s when it was set up, they were set up as two separate schools. Yeah. So what we're looking to do is try and ensure the yeah. system as it was previously is at least defended. Yeah. Now, I would okay. personally believe that co-education is a great improvement and yeah. most schools have taken on co-education. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that's not so controversial. But this concept of religious discrimination admissions is new. That was always part of the national school system. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right. yeah. No, as I say, I'm uh, I'm very interested in uh, in in particularly how this has evolved over, say, the last twenty years, because we've had some major social changes. But this seems to be one that's a bit slower to happen. If I'm uh, okay. well, uh, correct, John. But something, if I could go right back, because when I looked at your uh, your presentation. It seems we had a better deal, dare I say it, under Perfidious Albion than we did once we got independence. What's the background well, to that? Tell us the, the, well, uh, the history there, John. There, there, is a, there is a concept yeah. somewhere that, yeah. that everybody sort of has some idea that, that the system started off as all religions together, but quickly it started segregating. Mm -hmm. But the legislation remained the same. So, I mean, even today in the O'Keefe case or in any cases dealing with national schools, they still refer to the legislation of 1831 the Stanley letter, and it is still relevant legally yeah. today. Tell the but, listeners what that uh, what well, that is effectively saying. Then, well, the Stanley letter, because mm -hmm. the, the the Stanley letter addressed the issues in Ireland in the eighteen thirties, just post emancipation, mm -hmm. and they wanted to help the poor in Ireland, and they mm -hmm. set up mm -hmm. a state system of education in Ireland for the poor. Mm -hmm. So the, the the actual the, the national school system was not designed to teach everybody. Mm -hmm. Most, half the population was expected to go to private schools Precisely, as yes. they had been then. Sure, yeah, yeah. And this was set up for the poor. But they wanted to ensure that the religious divide, which had dominated this country since the Reformation, mm -hmm. um, was addressed. And they were determined that, they, that the national school system would not continue this division. Mm -hmm. So they set up a system that was legally non-denominational. Mm -hmm. But, as I say, what happened was that people segregated themselves. The Catholic bishops particularly yeah. insisted that their children not be taught by somebody other than a was, Catholic. Did that come in before independence? And I'm talking That's, 1922 here. Uh, well, what, happened, what happened in independence, again, another yeah. myth, another fiction, as, yeah. as people say. There's some concept that somewhere where through independence things changed. But in fact, yeah. the Anglo-Irish Treaty of 1920, the one Michael Collins has uh, negotiated, yes. has 18 clauses in it, mm. military, political, economic. There's mm. only one social clause, and that social clause is to continue the national school system into the new state. Mm -hmm. And it provided, it is the only social clause in, in a very short treaty, mm -hmm. and it says that where the state is, is supporting education, there can be no religious discrimination in the school, and there must be separate religious instruction to ensure that any child can go to the school. Right. That was continued in the 1922 constitution, word for word, continued in the 1937 constitution in articles 42 and 44. So that same provision from 1831 carried right through independence and into the constitution of 1937. Even though, you know, supposedly de Valera is very Catholic and all that, mm -hmm. but in fact, these were... were you know, these were Republicans who knew. Uh, okay, now you can help. You're going to have to help me out on this one, John, because I don't quite grasp the nuance of it. Did the Irish Constitution, effectively the document that we constantly amend at the moment, yeah. uh, did that not supersede pre-existing legislation? Yes, yes, no. The, the Constitution is a preeminent legislation today. It is. That's why we said that was the benchmark for yes. everything. Yes, and subject to that are mm. legislation like the 1998 Education Act and the 2000 yeah. Equal Status Act, but they're subject to the Constitution. And the Stanley letter remains in place except for those parts of it that might have been amended by the Constitution or by legislation. So the Constitution is the primary legislation in Ireland and mm. it insists in Article 44.24, which, yeah. uh, which has been discussed in the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. in the High Court, by the, the Irish Human Rights Commission, the mm -hmm. Equality Authority, and everybody is in agreement that it gives the right for every child to go to their local school and to be allowed to go there without... Uh, having to go to religious instruction at that school. Uh, okay. 
again, this is where you might have to help me out. And uh, does the preamble not give the wiggle room? And I'm and I'm going to go into this here in the sense that I'm a non-Christian. Uh, therefore, I always find the preamble to the Constitution discriminatory because it says that all laws will be made uh, taking into consideration Jesus Christ. That's fine. I'm not objecting to that for Christians. Uh, but I would suspect the Muslims might have a bit of an issue with that. I certainly have an issue with that. Now, but it only becomes an issue in practical terms. Now, uh, well, well, legally, what happened? The, the, in the, the, the so, 1800s, they talked about all Christians having rights. Yes. But with the 1937 Constitution, regardless of yeah. the of the preamble, the rights were given to all religious beliefs and none. Yeah. So they it widened yeah. the rights from just Christians to Christians, Muslims, Buddhists sure, yeah. and atheists all have an equal right of entry to the school. Yeah, yeah no, I, I agree, John, and I, and I should uh, state at the, at the outset, I am not against uh, faith-based education. However, and I'm going to put this uh, on the record, I do have a problem with the state funding it. You know, I'm used to state-based education, but it's always private. But uh, this is where the, the line yes. is crossed. What people yeah. misunderstand is that the Constitution gives parents a right to send their children mm -hmm. to a faith-based denominational school, but only privately funded. Absolutely. The term they yeah. use is yeah. private schools are according to their means. The line is crossed when you come to state funding. And with state-funded schools, you cannot have a discriminatory policy. If you happen to be lucky that the local school that you go to yeah. has a patron of the same religion as you, you will get free denominational sure, education, yeah. but you don't have a right to it. Mm -hmm. If your local school is Church of Ireland and you're Catholic, you have a right to go to the school, but you don't have a right to Catholic religious instruction in that school. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, what about preference then? And I tell you uh, the situation uh, that comes to mind. My daughter, who wasn't born in Ireland and isn't a, uh, wasn't raised as a Catholic, um, when we were looking at putting her through secondary school, she was just finishing, she went to... Uh, um, uh, one of the schools in Kilbarrick, uh, a mixed uh, denominational school. When we were then having a look at the local schools, the one that obviously came to mind was Mount Temple on uh, the Malahide Road. Yeah. She had preference for Mount Temple. She had, she didn't have to do an entrance exam or anything like that because she was baptised an Anglican. Now, yeah, now, are we talking the same thing here, John? We the the we're obviously the Irish National School, so so we sure. are primarily dealing with with uh, primary sure. level. Okay, but the Constitution and the Equal Status Act apply equally to secondary schools. So the Equal yeah, States no, Act. To said, be fair, that's fifteen uh, years ago, so I don't know if they've changed their policy. I'm not going to knock. No, them no, 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 no. I, uh, I believe that they still have. You know, they're the yeah. Protestants first. Yeah, like, I mean, like, I like a general. Yeah, I mean, I remember when it was Mount Joy, as you probably do yourself. Yes, yes, Bono yeah. was there even. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we, we, I went to St Paul's, and we, 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 one of the few schools we could beat in rugby it was Mount Joy. <laughs> sometimes, anyway. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. but. Uh, that, that the legislation and constitution applies equally. So, under, I mean, it might be unfortunate, but minority religions can't discriminate either. It's okay. not like this is not a Catholic issue. It is an issue for all denominations. But keep in mind that the Catholic Church and all the other churches have been trying to get free state-funded denominational education yeah. in Ireland since about 1835, for about 180 years. Mm -hmm. And the first time they've got it, which is illegal at the moment, yeah. is in the last 15 years. Another myth is that, you know, in the 1990s, all the schools discriminate on religious yeah. grounds. They did not. Yeah. The, the discrimination only came in, in our school, which was set up in 1848, it only came in in 2002, 154 years later, the first child was so, refused admission. Why was all of that then? Why did it, is it a resource issue? And that's one of the well, things I just wonder is, is No, that, it's not a resource issue. Yeah. They, that, that, the one thing, the Department of Education might be not, not great at, at everything, yeah. but the one thing they are great at is ensuring that everybody will get a place in a national state-funded school. Okay. Um, but the, the, the fact that some schools, some areas are, have more mm. population than others just from time to time. And in that case, everybody suffers. Not mm -hmm. just the, the non-Catholics yeah. and the atheists, that's illegal. So, I mean, if there aren't enough places in the local school, well, everybody suffers. So, both the, 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 the Catholics, the non-Catholics, the atheists, all have to go looking for other schools. Mm -hmm. This the, the, That the Constitution and the Stein Letter only okay. deal with religion. It, the most important, the only thing that's really in 
in the constitution is that religion cannot be used as a discriminatory policy. You can. Yeah. Constitutionally, you can discriminate on sexual grounds or yep. lots of other grounds, but not religion. Okay. Come to ask you then, John, I mean, How we see it? the injustice. We see, if you like, the illegality. So how does it still uh, prevail? Well, well, That's well, the question I ask you. What uh, happened? What happened? This is... We don't have a lot of evidence for this, but, but the Minister has mentioned it and the Catholic Primary School Management Association yeah. was that a secret deal was done in 1997 between certainly the Catholic Church, but maybe all of the denominations and the Department of Education to discontinue. Who was the Minister at that time? Was it well, we don't know. We have Was Branagh. it our friend out on the north side? Or? Neve Brannock. No, no. Neve, Neve Brannock oh. was, was for the first part of 1997 and Michal Martin for the second part. Now, we have asked both That's of these to uh, comment on this but they haven't done so. But a deal was done in 1997, apparently, yeah. that between the department and the, the church to discontinue the, the the national school system and to replace with a state-funded denominational school system. And they put in place a, a an instrument to change the leases, because the leases are non-denominational. It's a, 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 a document called a deed of variation. Yeah, okay. And this deed of variation was to be signed by the minister uh, suddenly you know, where there was no Catholic mentioned in the lease, suddenly it was going to be mentioned 32 times. Okay, I need to get this one clear, John, because uh, pe people will find uh, this very difficult to believe. Are you saying that this process of discrimination was initiated by a Labour Party minister? Probably. Okay, Probably. Yeah. The, 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 the reason why is because when you mention Neve Brannock, Neve, Neve's name will always stick in my mind because when we were, we used to go to a thing called the National Forum on Europe and when it was either Nice or Lisbon, one of the controversial treaties, Neve used to be there at every meeting and she would say the same thing. We used to almost have bets to see when she would say it and she would always say, some people see a plot. But I see a plan, and I'm just wondering well, if national schools need saw a plan where the rest of us are seeing a plot. Well, uh, this, the, the, but the, the, yeah. the deeds of variation were to be signed up, and, yeah. and everybody thought, including as far as I can see, the yeah. former on Patriots and Pluralism, yeah. everybody thought that all of these were signed because when I was on the board of management, yeah. I was told to keep an eye on your deed of variation. Yeah. But in fact, it turns out they weren't signed, okay. that they don't actually exist, that there were a number of them signed prior to 2006, but a small number. Yeah. And none of them have been signed in the last nine years okay, yeah. because apparently the Attorney General has brought up uh, the obvious problem, which this may Is well be unconstitutional. Okay. All right, then, if that's the case. Why then does not somebody initiate a legal action? I mean, you, you and I, John, we come from Clontarf. My God, they're quick with the uh, the legal actions out there. You just have to have a seawall or a bag of cement, well, and they'll uh, be out there. With like the, uh... We are encouraging people yeah. to look at the concept of bringing a a case under the Equal Status Act, yeah. under Section uh, Twelve yeah. of the Equal Status Act, or no, Section Seven. Yeah. Um, but it's very hard. I mean, like we've been involved in some yeah. parents getting their children into school, but once, and they're very, very enthusiastic yeah. before sure. they get their child into school, but when they get the child into school, understandably, they want they to stay strong. They want to keep yeah. quiet, and I can completely yeah. understand that. Yeah. And, but there are parents coming out, you see Nicola Murphy and Terra Neur and Rupesh Panikar out in yeah. Cavatili and Kelly okay. Monaghan up in Rohini who are becoming very, very, very active. Well, I was say, John, you know now that I'm a fair man, I would give uh, actual parents uh, who are uh, uh, affected by this issue, I would give them airtime if, uh, if, if they need it. So, okay, I can understand why individual families or parents might want to not, not go down this path, but what about organisations that have an interest in this sort of thing, like FLAC, for instance, who are very, very uh, prominent in the issue for gender recognition, or the Irish Human Rights Commission, who were involved in the, uh, the, well, the, the same-sex same marriage issue. Why are they... Well, the, it, the, the, the Irish Human Rights Commission did a uh, yeah. did a, a study of religion and uh, education a yeah. couple of years ago, but the one thing they omitted were admissions. Okay. So they talked about the great problems within the schools of mm. Muslims going to schools where there were Catholic uh, emblems all over the school. Uh, but they didn't talk about the fact that the Muslims couldn't get into the schools. Okay. The Equality oh. Authority did, we did a report in oh. 2011 called the Clontarf Report, which was available on the internet. It, it, very, very comprehensive report it is, John, and as I say, it makes very, very interesting reading. Yeah. But there's a lot more since then. A lot that since then we have found that, that the foundation documents commit all of the national schools in Ireland at their own foundation to be bona fide of the children of all religious denominations. Okay. And this really makes the case 
just so strong. Okay, uh, I then can uh, about uh, I suppose about two months ago I did an interview with a, uh, a woman who I have a great deal of respect for, which is Gillian Van Turnant, and Gillian was saying that she sees her remit. Uh, as making sure that all legislation is child-proof based on the child, children's referendum. Isn't this an obvious case to, uh, to take on board and then say, guys, hold on, this is children being discriminated against. Uh, this, is the, this is the net effect. Um, how do you feel about that, John? Uh, absolutely. Well, the, 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 the children's ombudsman, who's the children's ombudsman? Is it Emily Logan? Emily Logan yeah. spoke there uh, yeah. about a year ago about okay. saying that she definitely did not yeah. want to see this religious discrimination admissions policy. But again, they wouldn't engage with us. I, we contacted yeah. them and they said, look, we've done our report. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. We send documents to the Immigrant Council, to the, the Council of Civil Liberties, but it is very hard. We, we don't have any funds, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. It's very hard to get people engaged. We send it to the uh, teachers unions, they won't engage. People seem to be just happy to just go along with this and to say this Paddy Monaghan and, and, and huh. the, the present parents are being very, very effective. Okay. I've got to now ask you, uh, this is a, a, an odd question, uh, John, because last night on social media, because I put up notices and saying you're going to be on and you know what we were going to be talking about and somebody came back now i know they've got an association with the labor party in clontarf i know they were canvassing for aon last week and they said uh, ask him is he still in the labor party so yes i am still in the labor there party. You go. i am still in the labor party yeah, because the clontarf report my understanding it was presented to the labor party branch out in clontarf is that correct it, it was adopted by the, the labor yes. party it was adopted uh and we brought it to <laughs> Actually, we brought it to the, 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 the precursor to the 2010 yeah. Labour Party conference where it went through. The, so the, is it policy then? Or how no, close is it No, no. It then, it, 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 prior to the last the formation of the last government, the Labour Party was all for yeah. stopping religious discrimination. Unfortunately, yeah. when they got into power, um, we got our Labour Minister, uh, Ho Chi Minh Quinn, who turned out to be just a massive disappointment. <laughs> he turned down our report on the basis that the Labour Party is all about plurality, which is just you're the most, not, the most astounding thing. You're not going to tell me focus group politics, John. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Now, Jan O'Sullivan is talking about... Uh, she is a supportive of local children being able to go to local schools, mm. but she's the Minister for Education. She should be acting, not talking. She should be acting. Yeah. And again, she won't meet with us. Yeah. yeah, John, unfortunately, we've run out of time. If you're around the Dame Street area tonight, I believe the city council are having a special meeting just for you and I and the people of Clontarf. John, isn't that great? Oh, just, just, I hope that they keep the water in or out oh, or yeah, somewhere. Sure, somewhere, you know, I don't... No wall, please. No, well, as I say, whatever, whatever they do, I'm glad they're just setting the time aside to talk about me. But anyway, in the meantime, it's been a pleasure having John Suttle uh, as our guest today. Irish National Schools Trust, look it up on the website.